guys and welcome to this full build of Hobby Boss's 1 through 50th scale Akuba Plow Summary. This is my first build in many years, so I consider this a prep episode just to get my skills up and running again. That's why I chose this kit. It's pretty small, pretty simple, with decent detail, and a little bit of photo etch and, and really good instructions, so it should be fun. So this sub was commissioned in 1986 and caused quite a stir because at the time the West had no idea the Russians could build something like this and they're still in service today. So with naval kits it's a good idea to build your stand first since this is where your hull is going to be placed whenever you work in it. First big mistake I'm making, coming back to modeling, is applying cement to two pieces before you join them. You run the risk of having too much there, melting the plastic, and then when you join, it squeezes out of the join and makes a mess. Luckily, I got away with it here. Better plan is to do what I'm doing now. Join them dry, arrange them so there's a nice smooth join, and then run some cement along the, along the side, and that'll leak in and secure the, the two pieces together. Another big lesson I've learned since is to use nippers rather than a blade to cut plastic from the sprue. You're inviting disaster and it's just so much easier, more control with nippers. There's not many pieces to assemble in this kit, so it's a nice, easy weekend build. There's a few small delicate pieces left to assemble and I decided I'd rather leave them off for now because I'm about to do uh, a bunch of work on filling gaps and I'd rather leave them off so that all this handling doesn't do any damage. For filling I'm using my favorite substance which is Vallejo plastic putty. You apply it straight from the tube, brush it into place and then use a wet brush just to dissolve it where needed so that it flows nicely with the surface. And this minimizes the amount of cleanup work you'll need to do. Looking at all my reference, these subs have a very organic nature to their surface. So I decided to do a little experiment with Milliput epoxy putty. 
It's quite easy to use. You cut two equal parts, thoroughly mix it together. I use talcum powder to prevent sticking to my work surface. And now I'm laying it on there and sculpting it into place just to try to get some kind of organic feel. Then of course I'm using a scribe and some sculpting tools just to rescue some of the detail back. But I think this could do the trick. I'm a little nervous I'm, I might go too far and wreck the model. So while that dries, I decide to quickly get the etch work out of the way using my trusty old etch folding tool. And my AK rolling set, since one of these pieces has a slightly round profile. I dip these guys in super glue and pop them on the model. Then filling very slightly with Vallejo plastic putty. At this point I decided not to carry on with my millipad experiment. It looks good in the nose but I'd rather quit while I'm ahead. I decided to try a plastic putty wash. I'm masking certain details using masking tape. These lines are not strictly according to reference, they're, they're, they're fictional, I guess. Once I had the masking done, I'm very simply running some watered down Vallejo plastic putty as a wash over the model. This is strictly experimental. By no means is it necessary. The model has some nice detail, but I thought, I thought I'd just try to achieve something different. Okay, I gave that about five minutes to dry. Not too long, I don't want it to stick to the tape and, and crack or cause anything untoward. Peeling the, this tape off, I'm starting to like what it's giving me in terms of raised detail. Now to give it extra dimension with the long pieces off, I decide to do another wash to take the edge off of them, but as well as to add another layer on top of the square pieces that are still on the model. Okay, five minutes later, I'm peeling them away and it's pretty cool. I'm quite liking what it's giving me. I have that organic feel at the front and the feeling of many panel lines all over the hull. I'm using a scribe here to rescue some of the detail that was got lost in the wash. Now it's time to place those delicate pieces I was worried about. Including these sensor pods. So this is where I made my next big mistake. Instead of using flat black, I used tire black, which is way too gray and even slightly shinier than, than the submarine surface should be. So if you're following along, please use flat black at this point. But there's an interesting fix, which is, uh, which is worth watching coming up. For any metallic pieces, I first apply a gloss black and then Vallejo metallic model air which is amazing stuff that flows really beautifully through an airbrush. With those done, it's time to mask out the 
bottom half of the submarine to paint the red part of the hull. Here I'm using Vallejo model color hull red. Model color is a much thicker paint. To airbrush it, it can be a bit tricky getting the ratio of airbrush to, air, to airbrush thinners correct. While that dries, I'm hand painting the propeller. Maybe not the best thing. It didn't have the smoothest finish, but it was fine. You can see already how gray this submarine is, but I didn't quite realize at the time until, until much later. With everything dry, it came time to place the antennas and the periscope. There's a spot of copper on one of these guys. Now it's time for decals, so a gloss varnish. With Vallejo's varnish, it's 50% varnish, 50% airbrush thinners, always that ratio. Now, for as simple as submarine models can be, their decals can quite often be pretty damn tricky because there's these long lines that run the, the length of the hull. So I'm using Vallejo model set, which is just like most others. It's uh, a, a gooey substance that you apply and let it dry. It's much like the, the adhesive that decals sit on, on the paper with. So before applying the decal, just activate it with a little bit of water and slide the decal on. I had problems with this very first piece, probably the hardest piece to get right and to balance it. With all the handling, it tore and I decided to scrap it and fix it in post. Now, time for the rest of the decals and where wherever these decals go, I've already applied some sets. So activate the set with water, slide on the decal. If need be, dry it with a cotton bud and move on. With decals this long and delicate, I've found it's good to use a brush or your finger, but make sure your the surface is damp because if, you, if your skin's too dry, it'll stick to you and you could rip the decal. Another error that was made that was never fixed with this was that the two decals at the front the very top decal along the nose is slightly skew, but it's pretty negligible, so I left it. Here comes the last few water depth decals.
and now it's time for Vallejo's decal softener. And this stuff is amazing, but it's unlike any other one I've used. What it does is it forms a film over the decal that sits in and softens it. But the problem is if you let it dry that way, it'll have an edge around the decal where, where the material was. So what you want to do is take a damp brush, a, a wet, almost a wet brush, and dissolve the edges of where that film was. So here you can see I'm putting a nice layer of softener on, then taking a damp brush and, and dissolving the edges of that stroke. And that way you, you won't have any membrane lines running across the, the model. Now, time to fix this mess at the front. Here I'm masking that torn decals line. Quite a bit of work to fix a, a broken decal. Straight flat white and painting that in front to continue the line. Now, while that dries, let's get the base a nice gloss black. And it's always rewarding peeling your masking off. All that masking did damage some of the paint jobs, so it did touch ups. It doesn't look great, but what can you do? Here I just uh, use some paper to wrap around the base so that uh, it didn't tear any more paint off. Now, time for a matte varnish. Again, 50% varnish, 50% airbrush thinners. Vallejo's matte varnish is not very matte. They do have an ultra matte, but I didn't have it at this stage. And this is where I came to the realization my paint job was completely wrong. This guy was the wrong shade. And this was now the tedious job of masking everything back over. protecting the decals so that I could apply a matte black. It was a big job, but watching that matte black spray over the surface was very rewarding. Watching that mistake be fixed in real time was well worth it. And again, some unmasking. Very delicate unmasking. This guy's starting to look like a submarine. Now there were small gaps where you could still see the original paint with the decals. I'm just doing very fine touch-ups with a fine brush and matte black. Then painting some off-white just to fix any gaps with the white decals. Looking pretty good. Now a satin varnish, since we're gonna do a wash, it needs to flow nicely over the over the model. I decided to try do a gray wash. I wanted to be subtle about things, so I, I mixed a dark gray and a white wash to try and make a, a kind of a gray wash and keep things subtle. Very quickly I realized cleaning this guy with airbrush thinners afterwards that it was too subtle and I might as well just go 
full whitewash and see what we get. This stuff's pretty cool. Just laying it on thick and heavy, and draping it where uh, material would settle. Then using my microfiber cloth dipped in airbrush thinners, just to wipe it, wipe it away. Caution that too much airbrush thinners can can eat into the varnish layer. Now it's time for some weathering with oils. So first the matte varnish, and then I use Aptiling Matte Effect Varnish and do a slight wash with it before I use their oils. I'm using a uh, off-white as well as some uh, brown and rust color just for metallic weathering. These thinners dry in about five to 10 minutes. So you've got that time. I think less is more. Otherwise it'll just wash away and you'll hardly see anything. This was my first time using it. So taking it slow, getting a feel for what they do. What started to work quite nicely was selecting some panels and dotting some of the off-white on them and just working that onto the panels. If it runs over, no problem, because you could always use a dark oil to, to fix those edges at a later stage, which you'll see I did soon after. Here I'm using a dark brown, which almost looks like a black. Just to define some of these edges a bit a bit more. It, it gives the sub much more definition. With that all done, time to apply the final varnish coat. Now, I wasn't too thrilled with the flares matte varnish at the time, so I did a bit of research and found out that Tamiya make an amazing flat clear aerosol and use that which is as flat as it comes, and I think it's great for a, for a submarine. The last thing to do is apply the, the propeller using Ammo's Ultra Glue, and that's the model done. So with that all done, I decided to design a nameplate as well as a diorama piece based on, on reference imagery I saw from Russian submarine bases. I 3D printed them, prepped them, and tutorials will be available for these on my Patreon along with the downloadable files for my premium subscribers. With that all prepped and done, here's the final result. Hope you enjoy. And that's it for this build. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and subscribe. And remember to check out my Patreon for downloadable instructions, 3D files, tutorials and more. See you soon.